Hey folks, good to see you again. To this point in the learning modules, you've learned what telehealth is and you've provided some tips on structuring your day. In this module, we will talk about how to transition direct ABA services to a health telehealth model. In the 2020 article titled, Maintaining Treatment Integrity in the Face of Crisis, Christine Rodriguez outlines an assessment process and provides a telehealth treatment selection guide to assist behavior analysts in determining the correct protocol for providing direct one-to-one -one telehealth services that involves a behavior technician directly instructing a learner with or without the assistance by the learner's caregiver through video conferencing. The framework developed by Rodriguez is intended as an aid to help analysts better determine the following. Number one, which learners are ready for immediate treatment with minimal program modifications. Number two, which learners programs would require substantial modifications to goals, teaching procedures, and or behavior intervention plans. And number three, which learners present with barriers requiring advanced problem solving to access the benefits of direct telehealth services. Once the behavior analyst completes the brief assessment through telehealth consultation, they are able to then use the matrix as a guide to treatment delivery, which considers the repertoire of both the learner and caregiver with specific training recommendations for the behavior analyst and behavior technician via telehealth. As part of the framework, the behavior analysts can use the program modification assessment guide as number one, an assessment of a learner's ability to attend or respond to skill acquisition programs, and number two, an assessment of a caregiver's ability to facilitate the skill acquisition program and or the behavior intervention plan. I will provide a few of the critical details, but I would highly recommend that you seek out the research yourself to better learn and guide your telehealth consultation. To assess skill acquisition using the program modification assessment, which is the first part, the behavior analyst would do the following. Number one, instruct the caregiver to gather any required materials and reinforcers. Number two, request the caregiver to direct the learner to attend to the screen, i.e. the synchronous video display of the behavior analyst. Number three, run several learner goals. These are three that have been previously mastered and generalized across people and or settings. Three that have met mastery criteria under strict stimulus conditions but are not yet meaningfully generalized. And three that are in acquisition or in progress. Number four uh, records the following data. Number of redirections needed for the learner to attend to the screen. The number of trials to which the learner attends the number of least intrusive successful prompts, and the schedule of reinforcement required to maintain correct responding. And finally, number five, the BCBA notes the caregiver's ability to prompt, redirect, and deliver reinforcement. The second part of the program modification assessment involves the behavior analyst assessing behavior management. This involves the analyst doing the following. Number one, Reviewing the intervention plan with the caregiver while guiding the caregiver with naturalistic routines requiring them to implement antecedent strategies and prompt replacement behaviors. Number two, guiding the caregiver to create contingencies that evoke moderate intensity problem behavior. Number three, coaching the caregiver through implementation of the behavior plan. And number four, finally, assessing the caregiver's ability to implement the plan independently. Based on the results of the program modification assessment and any other data related to the learner and caregiver's repertoires, the behavior analyst uses the telehealth model selection matrix to determine what might be the most appropriate telehealth treatment model. The matrix, a tool to categorize and determine treatment structure based on a learner's repertoires and needs, also allows the behavior analyst to assess caregiver repertoires and training needs based on their ability to facilitate session structure and to manage problem behaviors. Selection of repertoires leads to selection of a corresponding treatment structure. It's really set up nice. 
The model laid out by Rodriguez is practical and timely. I really like it and I suggest that you dig deeper into the article yourself. However, I do encourage you to continue to do your own research to ensure you are utilizing the most current and effective evidence-based process that work best for you and the learners that you serve. Mm-hmm.